Welcome to your best bets. A week off last week. Uh, we had a lot to talk about, but just not a lot of time. Life happened. So we're back this week to talk about a very, very full slate of things on the PGA Tour, some local golf. Um, we had a major a couple weeks ago, so let's get right into it. I'm very, very pleased to welcome back to the show, Mr. Zach Lear. Zach, good to see your face again. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on. And a, a face that we always love to see, Johnny Strauser. Johnny, what's good in Detroit? What's good in Detroit? I don't really know. I, I really don't know. You know, Tigers kind of suck. Yeah. Pistons, Pistons did the best thing they could with the draft. Uh, Red Wings are coming up with their draft. It's hmm. it's, it's about the Lions right now. Everybody's, I was going to say, I think we're, we're getting to that time, man. The Dan Let's... Campbell bandwagon here. Yeah. And, uh, Ooh, I can't wait to see how potentially overvalued the Lions might be. I'm getting a little worried. You know, I, I don't even know, like, I keep hearing from people, just national media, whatever, local people here, and they talk about the Lions in, in a positive way. And I'm like, are you? Are you are you being serious to me or something like that? Or are you, you just being an asshole and they're probably being a little bit of both, but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, it's, it's um, I, I had seen that this is the worst time. This, this current like five to eight year stretch is like the worst time to be a Detroit sports fan in like 80 years or something like that. So there's really nowhere to go, but up at this point. And uh, I, I'm look, I can at least say that as bad as it's been, I was there for the entire bad times and I'm going to be there, um, you know, hopefully when, uh, when the lions win the division and then end up uh, going to the super bowl this year. Well, we definitely got a lot to talk about with NFL in August. Uh, yes. Post city tournament before the season starts. I uh, can't wait to get into that. Speaking of bad things, I did a really bad thing today. Obviously we recorded this on a Monday night uh, guys on a Monday morning. What's like the worst thing you can think of that you accidentally scheduled for yourself well for me that was a dentist appointment on a monday morning at 8 a.m mm. i forgot about it, and it was like last night at 10 o'clock i was like oh shit i gotta go to the dentist first thing in the morning just brutal zach i mean would you rather get like an appointment like that over with first of the week or just somewhere in the middle i mean there's it always seems like it's at a bad time you know yeah i mean i i usually like to start my mondays off i love mondays um and the, I hate the dentist, so I you. just Something don't see. You. Hey, it's a new start, man. Yeah. Every Monday is a new start. So if you hear from me a lot, I'll say every day, happy Monday. Uh, Something, wrong. I, Something wrong with you. But you don't have me on this podcast because I am uh, the least weirdest person you have on this podcast. So at least I'm staying true to form. Something weird. Not that, that funny, Strasser. <laughs> no, just the least weirdest. That's a good. One. That's a good one. I'm gonna start telling people that. Yeah. Well, some something that wasn't weird that happened over the weekend was Rory Ransberg winning an FWJ event at Brookwood, which I think is it's at least I think his second year in a row winning this event. It might have been third. I didn't look. Didn't look in the archives today, but uh, Rory Ransberg wins uh, the amateur open at brookwood um looks like beat hunter mefford by a couple um guys rory ransburg just wins a lot and he owns that golf course johnny he, he certainly does um i think this is his second year in a row winning that and he won the city championship when it was there that was his first city championship um at brookwood he uh shot a real low number when the um state am qualifying was there i believe that was four years ago um so this golf course sets up well for him and mo as most golf courses I i'm sure do but you know he, he uh he hits the ball real long he's a real great driver of the golf ball the greens are fairly flat at that golf course so you know if you hit your lines on 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 the greens they roll pretty true they're a little generally on the slow side but they do roll very 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 true i think he's a cobblestone number and that the the greens are very similar to that at cobblestone where you could really get the ball going um you know if you get towards a the hole there you can make a lot of putts so really really falls into um ranks of his game which are the 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 driver and the um and, and the putter and uh you know he just outlasts and he's very patient he's very confident and just uh just kept 
you know, hanging in there and he'll, he knows the birdies are going to come. And as, as they are with most, uh, um, most events he plays in and he has a, a great knack of, um, getting his game in peak performance for a lot of these FWG events, which is impressive in and of itself, because I mean, you know, we all want that consistent golf game, but, uh, to get it playing well, you know, we always talked about, you know, um, you know, these pro golfers, like, you know, like Tiger Woods back in the day would, playing the regular season PGA tour events and he would peak for the majors and always, you know, seem to get his game going that way. And, and, and that's very similar to what Rory does. I know we've talked about it before, but uh, yeah, he just, it's, it's uh, hard for him to make bogeys at that golf course. Cause, cause it, it fits his game so well. And he just outlasts everybody. And uh, you know, I'm sure it looked like that when that huge rainstorm came in, I don't think they were done at that point. So mm-hmm. just to get through that and then to come back out after the rain and uh um, you know, play some good golf and finish it out is is amazing. A dude just get just figures out a way to 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 play good golf. You know, every single event it seems like. That's right, Zach. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean that's it. That's his course. Um, I think he's actually helping Cobblestone uh, with their greens. So he's 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 really putting some time in this summer. And um, man, I I definitely don't want to play him on either one of those courses. So. Um, <laughs> Mad, mad props to Rory for learning and figuring out how to finish. Well, I, the good news is I don't think you have to play match play against Rory on either one of those courses this summer. So that is the good news. Um, uh, by, by the way, but a little bit of a podcast bump for Garrett Leeper. He was on after his win at, at Riverbend, finished T5, so a good follow-up for him. Um very special guest joining us tonight. Uh, kind of following what we've done for the last couple of local uh, local events for the uh, FWGA. Uh, this guy has been pretty much on fire on both tours, the FWGA and Three Rivers Tour. Um, I'll read off his finishes. It's very Scotty Scheffler like, um, um, but he finished third over the weekend. Um, I'm going to bring him in right now. This is where it's always like bad radio um, as. Uh, we're going to welcome in Bailey Marquardt. Um, just finished his freshman year at St. Francis. Um, really been a, a fixture on the local golf scene this season. Bailey, can you hear us? Yep. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. I see a Javi Baez jersey in the background, so you're in, you're in good company. But I do see an Iserman jersey as well. Uh, it was one of my parents' old ones. They used to be big hockey fans, so they gave it to me. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, you were, you were going to be one of Johnny's favorites right there because he's a Red, Wing, Red Wings guy, but I'm a Cubs guy as well. So uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on, Bailey. Um, I was just talking about your your finish over the weekends, and really it's, I mean, I was looking at your, your finishes on both tours, the Three Rivers Tour and FWGA so far this season. I'm going to read this off. Your finishes on the Three Rivers Tour, first, first, fifth, T3, and on the FWGA so far, T4, T2, 6th, 3rd. So eight starts, worst finish, 6th. That's very Scotty Scheffler-like. What's been working so far the last couple months? Um, You cut out there right at the very end. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I missed what you said. Uh, basically, what's what's been working so well for you the last couple months with your game? I mean, what's I mean, what's what's going well? Um, I think just kind of a healthy mix of everything. Um, I mean, everybody knows that golf is different every day. You know, some days you're driving it real well, some days you're putting it real well. Um, I just haven't had a day in any of those tournaments that I have done every aspect of the game poorly. Um, and at any given day, I can do any aspect of the game better than the day before. So I don't, you know, I think that's why I'm in it every tournament I play in. Third place this past weekend at the the AM Open at Brookwood, um, 70-72. Um, uh, you know, we were talking about Rory before you came on, just kind of that's how, how his place, I mean, he's kind of dominated there the last three, four years. Um, tell us about the tournament, what went well for you. It looked like Sunday played a lot tougher. I assume maybe the wind started blowing before the storms came in. Yep. I mean, right away on the range, you knew Sunday was going to be tough because it was blowing about 20 miles an hour, just a sustained wind, which is kind of a good amount. Um, the goal on Saturday was 68, 
just because I feel like somebody, the field's good enough, somebody always goes lower than that. Um, and usually their second day is a little shakier. Um, so I figured 68 would be good enough to keep me in the mix. Um, when I saw 166 after Saturday, I knew it'd be tough on Sunday. So just tried, did the best I could. 68. That's, that's like, that's like a Bryson at Augusta like par. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing <laughs> you say. Um, Johnny, Zach, I don't want to dominate. You guys got anything for Bailey? Well, no? I, 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 I was going to ask you, I mean, I know you've worked on your game quite a bit and you, you picked up the game a little bit later um, as far as, you know, when, when most kids usually start as, as young junior golfers, I know you picked it up a little bit later there. Um, what do you, what do you feel is, is a strength of your game? Like, you know, one thing that one or two things that you can, when you go out and play a tournament, a college tournament, whether it's a FWGA or a Three Rivers or just out in a money game or something like that, what's what's some good points or good parts of your game that you can generally feel comfortable that you're going to bring in every single time? Um, I'd say inside of 10 feet with the putter. Um, I think that's probably where, you know, I gain more shots on the field than other people. Um, if I'm hitting it to within 10 feet, I know I'm going to make most of them um, getting up and down. Just having putts in that short range, I don't miss a lot of putts in that short range. And I think distance helps. I hit the ball a, a decent – Yeah. Definitely yeah. in the Fort Wayne area. Also got to help with uh, with with the college golf because I know – Oh, I mean, it's been – it's been a minute since I played college golf. We're talking, you know, almost 20 years ago, but, uh, but nowadays, I mean, I think you got to be able to hit it far just to be able to compete because they play golf courses that are very challenging. They put the tees back on, on most of the courses and everything. So you probably feel, you, you feel that you got to be able to drive the ball really, really well, just to, to stay up with these other kids. And, you know, with college, you played a lot tighter golf courses. Um, so coming to Fort Wayne and playing in these tournaments, everything seems much more open. Mm. Um, so you kind of just let it go, especially at Brookwood. Leader, you got anything good? I know you've been waiting. No, no, I'm I I've been proud of Bailey the the last two years. I've gotten kind of a courtside seat to watching this kid work, and I would rather say it when he wasn't on the screen. But I, I'm definitely proud of him over the last couple of years. Uh, um, he's ventured his time and he spent some time in the studio and we've worked with the St. Francis kids. So, um, I, I think the drive that he has is, is really cool. Um, definitely come a long way from the kid I met a few years ago. So good work, Bailey. That'll be the last nice thing I say to you, but you know, other than that, that's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I mentioned, you know, before you came on, you you just finished your freshman year at St. Francis. What's What has surprised you about college golf or was something that you didn't expect? Um, the hardest part is just, you know, a normal day, a normal tournament day. Your first round is is mostly always 36 holes. Um, and I think an underratedly hard part about it is starting on any random golf hole. Right. Golf courses are designed a certain way to start in certain ways. And you get out to college and they put you on any any hole to start off. Um, that's definitely the hardest part. And then walking 36 holes in a day is never easy. I, I was going to make a live joke there, Zach. I'd be like, this sounds like live. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you but you purist in your sport here. Uh, how does uh, how does Pine Valley set up for you for the city? Um, I was out there a week or so ago and played out there. Um, I think it sets up pretty well for just like the most balanced player because there's tight golf holes. There's golf holes that you could take advantage of with distance. Um, I, they weren't super, the greens weren't super fast when I was there, but I know they can be. Um, so that's always fun. Um, it's, it's always in nice shape, so I'm not really worried about it. I think you just have to have everything kind of dialed in for that tournament, especially. I just, I just realized now, wasn't the, the four of us, we played a practice round at autumn last year. I think I just remember that now. I think we did. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of, I didn't, I didn't design it tonight like that, but I just remember that. Um, 
Zach, Johnny, anything else? I got to Yeah, I are you still working with Callahan on your golf swing? I haven't worked with Callahan in a while. No, been a while. Okay, so I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure you're still working on different uh, different points of your golf swing. You know, because you know, as you know, a golfer is always looking for for ways to improve their golf swing and everything. But uh, have you gotten to the point where your work, the more you work on it, as you've gotten through your college first college golf season, you know, to where you can, you feel like you can trust it in these events because, uh, you know, looking at your golf scores for the summer events here, I know you said you got a lot of confidence because, you know, the golf courses seem more playable than what you've played in college and everything. But, uh, but, you know, just your overall swing with the driver, with your irons, do you feel more comfortable over the ball? Like you can just kind of let it go. And, and you know that, you know, you can make a lot more better swings and hit a lot more fairways and greens. Yeah. That's, Right. When you start to trust yourself is when you start to play the best golf. Yeah. Um, and I went through that kind of midway through last year was when I was finally able to just start going out there and swinging it like it's practice. Um, I think the tournament aspect helps me play a little bit better because I'll think about things that I might not think about in just normal rounds, like better spots to miss it and things of that nature. So I think I am there and it, it definitely has improved. That is, something that's really important good you playing at uh river bend in a couple of weeks and the three rivers event there i think so yep so that'll be a good one that's kind of a home golf course for me mm -hmm. um you you, uh, you know we we had a we had a big episode about that river bend tournament from, from a couple of weeks ago uh the fwga events um uh what what was your take on 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 that weekend um was it was it across I guess over the line or was it just typical riverbend? Um, it wasn't typical riverbend. It can play much harder than that. I mean, they dumbed it down pretty, you know, yeah. pretty substantially. I know um, the roller got working a couple of days before, so that made it the greens roll super good. Um, I think the thing there that people didn't realize is you can't just hit it everywhere, right? A lot of those golf holes are are made to hit it in certain spots. And when you go out there and try to hit driver green side, end up in the rough and have a, you know, tiered green, mm -hmm. it's hard to get balls to stop when greens roll that good. And I mean, that's how it is everywhere. That's how a lot of college golf tournaments were. Um, so I don't think it was too tough. I obviously didn't play that great for myself, but to the field, I did okay. Um, but it was, I don't think it was unfair. I have a feeling you might say that. Um, all right, Bailey, uh, I, we appreciate you taking some time. Uh, we'll let you go, get out of here. Uh, good luck the rest of the summer as we lead into uh city tournament. Thank you for having me. Go again, Any, Bailey. Anytime. See you guys. All right. That was Bailey Morricourt off a third place finish the past weekend. Like I said, he's got eight starts over two tours, eight top tens couple wins um, kind of under the radar, just ridiculously good golf he's been playing. So definitely someone to watch as we head into the city tournament at Pine Valley. Uh, Zach, I know you're intending to play the qualifier. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. How's the game shaping up, buddy? Um, you know, we're uh, definitely having a, a, a decent little summer so far. Um, still working uh, wedges are starting to come along. So I think that was something that I struggled with a little bit last year was um, I got the driver kind of working for me a little bit and I feel comfortable with it for the most part. Uh, but the wedges kind of let me down uh, definitely last year in city. So um, that was a, a key focus this winter. And um, I think they're starting to come along. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, the key question is your dad going to caddy for you? Oh yeah. For sure. Uh, I loved sure. I, I loved having him out there uh the qualifier last year. That was he was he was a cool dude. That was that was he, a fun time. He's convinced that he could be a professional caddy. Um right <laughs> maybe, now. He maybe maybe he's maybe he's not wrong. Maybe he's uh, right. He loved it. Well, was it Ryan? Um I forget yeah. what midway through Ryan was Ryan was playing okay, but he was struggling a little bit. My dad leaned over and said something. He's like, Why don't you just freaking make it? And then he went on that run to the, he, he had what, 
He was like birdie, he, birdie, ball out of bounds, birdie, ball out of bounds, uh, birdie. It was like he was, I was like, shut up, man. He was insane the second nine. Like he was, it was like Colin Morikawa out there. I mean, Ryan Walsh went nuts there, the back nine of the qualifier. But that was fun. That was one of the more fun runs I had last year. Um well, speaking of having a fun summer, Wyndham Clark is having a good summer. Um, I know we're a couple weeks late, but we never really got to talk about the U.S. Open here on the pod. Um, you know, it's funny because I felt like a lot of this season, you know, Johnny and I being the consistent ones here, kind of talking about who's going to win or someone to look out for, we'd always say Wyndham Clark, like, dude, can hit it a mile. He's always been a great putter, but his irons were just, frankly, pretty bad the last or, well, three, four five years, I guess, however long he's been on tour, but this season he's made this huge jump where it's really made him just a complete player where he almost doesn't have a ton of holes or weaknesses in his game. And he won the event Wells Fargo down in Quill Hollow uh, in May, and then follows it up a couple starts later with the U S open win. Zach, did you see much of it? And what were your thoughts on Wyndham Clark? I mean, uh, he, he just had the confidence he needed to to pull that off. I mean, I think if you could tell he was, he felt his, he kind of, kind of reminds me of Bailey a little bit. I think when Bailey gets dialed in, he's convinced he's the best player on the course and he's going to take the shots he needs um, and he's going to hit them. He's going to stand over those shots now with the confidence that he's, you know, he's not thinking about a technique or a, something he's doing. He's just taking aim and firing. And I thought the, I thought the shot he hit Saturday night, um, coming into 18, I, I felt like that was, I don't want to say it won in the tournament, but like it, it, it made a huge difference. It got him in the final group. It kind of was like a big dick shot, right? Like they just stuffed it there in front of the whole world. <laughs> Everyone's rooting for Ricky. Ricky makes bogey and the whole momentum of the tournament felt like it shifted um, at that point into Wyndham Clark's favor. Uh, Johnny thoughts on Clark thoughts on, I guess, you know, how Sunday played out with, with he and Rory mainly as they pulled away. Well, Saturday, that the Saturday 18th hole, I think that was the key to get him in that final group there after three putting 17 for bogey, you know, he was looking like he was going to be paired in the second to last group. And, uh, you know, after winning that, uh, winning the elevated event, there was a lot of confidence that I, I think he thought if he could get into that final group, that was, uh, that was going to be the thing. So getting, hitting it tight on 18 which was a you know an extremely difficult hole in and of itself and making birdie there to get in that final group there was was critical there but he was just so rock solid and just really unflappable throughout pretty much the entire day um i think he what was it was it the six hole the drivable hole where he kind of scuffed it around there um but he had made a couple birdies i think up until that point but you know he had always been a guy that I had picked and put money on several times this, this summer. Um, unfortunately not this week, but, uh, or Wells Fargo for that matter. But, uh, he was always a guy that I liked in these events. Cause you know, he's a long hitter. Um, you know, he looked better over the putter and, and the irons were just improving. So he was just kind of that, that, that pick that was like you know lower in the odds that, that seemed pretty good there he wasn't one that was really i think on anybody's radar at least that much for uh for the u.s open because i mean his best finish prior to that in a major championship was t75 which is barely making the cut that's like dead dead last there for among people who made the cut so you know you didn't really expect it and everything but you know it, these guys are good enough that any given any given day they could uh, or any given week they could win a golf tournament and he certainly had the talent to do it. Um, but that final round though, um, you know, Rory kind of hung in there, kind of did Rory things where it looked all right, and then you know, he pulled away, and then they they both kind of pulled away from the other guys, and you know, and then just kind of him, Rory kind of did his thing where. That's a, you know, the last nine hole special where it's just, you know, uninspiring golf shots, you know, uh, he, he hit his driver unreal the entire week and, and he hit it well last week too at, uh, at travelers, but, uh, just, you know, when he needed an iron shot, he didn't hit one. And like, you know, what was it, what was that last part three when he had like 125 going in and hit a wedge mm -hmm. and buried it in the lip of the bunker he I got really the the luckiest break ever to get a free drop out of it and then still couldn't make par 
and just you know just things like that that uh unfortunately have have plagued rory the last decade here in not only majors but but the regular pga tour events as well but uh you know pretty incredible by for for wyndham there you know he 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 basically won a big time event at wells fargo doubled down in the in the u.s open to to win that and i thought that was pretty incredible there um pretty amazing now i know he had he had missed his driver a little bit there it got away with some, especially on 18 on the 72nd hole. Um, but with that the wide a, that fairway, was a, that was a Phil Miller special on 18. That was a Phil Miller, just banana cut yeah. gross thing there. But, but, but would he have hit that shot? At the, like, let's say, I mean, you didn't, you didn't have to be so mean about it. Yeah. That, that was aggressive. I, I yeah. When he said yeah, gross, that felt personal. No, I didn't have to, but I mean, I was just being honest, you know, so <laughs> No, but, but no, but I mean, you know, they, he got kind of criticized for it and everything like that. But if this was like the 18th hole at Oakmont, you know, with a with a 21 yard wide fairway, you know, he's yeah. not going to hit that type of thing there. So you never know what what the results were going to be. But he took the golf course and at what it was, and 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 the golf course. God, I was hoping it was going to be like a two or three. Un- there we go. It's still I'm a good still, logo. Though. I'm I'm still riding hard for LACC. Yeah, um, I still because- love. Because I think there was a lot of um, misunderstanding out there about golf course versus golf course setup by the USGA, and there's some some ways that I think they erred. Um, uh, you know, I think I think Sunday the way it played was it was pretty difficult to make birdies, and I, I think obviously Thursday was crazy and that was out of hand. But Saturday, Sunday, I think it played more like a, like it was supposed to play firm and fast. I think it was too soft on Thursday. They cut down the rough in some areas. We talked about 18. Like, I think that ball by Wyndham Clark probably ends up in the rough from what I understand. But they they cut down the rough, the USGA did, and made that fairway super wide. Um, I still like the venue. I thought – I, I thought the golf course itself is good. Now, there was a lot of – problems with the corporatization of the tournament um the domination of of ticket sales to members and them really kind of owning that event and not a lot of public was allowed in and it it was so so weird because on saturday night ricky makes that like 65 footer on 13 which is the toughest hole week it was an amazing moment and it sounded like it sounded like our, you know, member guest at Riverbend or something, you know, where there's a couple couple people that are around the green. I mean, I was like, what the hell is going on? Where, I mean, I understand that was a part of the golf course where there weren't fans around the green, but just the the atmosphere as a whole was, it, it just was totally different this past weekend at Travelers where it was raucous, it was fun, and then U.S. Open, it's just muted, and you're kind of like, what's what's the deal? This is a major tournament. We have a guy going for his first major. We got Rory McIlroy. We got Ricky. We got all these guys. We got Scotty. And it's just, it was, that wasn't great. And I don't know how they correct that for the next one. Um, was it 2039? <laughs> is that what it is? Back at LACC, yeah, like- I think so. Um, I probably won't even be around by then, uh, by that time. Um, but um, so I, I, I do, I do want to kind of defend the golf course because I, I do think, I do think it is a good golf course. I think the USGA made a couple of errors, but it, these things are so hard to get right because you go too far across the line. Then you got Zach Johnson showing up on the screen saying they lost the golf course, like Shinnecock. Yeah. And then it, if you go too far the other way, it's like Thursday where guys are tying, you know, major records, a couple of guys, 62, 63s, and it's, people don't like that. So it is a hard thing to get right, especially for the U S open. Um, I do think it's kind of like you go to one restaurant. Sorry, I'm going a little long on this and we'll get to Zach's last, but you know, I go to a restaurant and I get one thing, right. I, I, I might have a steak and um, you know, just like a, some sort of delicious side. Right. And then I go to another restaurant and I get Mexican and I love Mexican food. And then I might go to an Italian place. And I think that's all great. I think the U S open and I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. There's not like a chambers Bay in the next 10, 15 years. Um, I think variety is great. It doesn't always have to play two over par or even par. Eight to 10 under, I think, is fine. Um, and that's what it, I mean, it ended up being 10 under, which I think at the beginning of the week, you'd be like, okay, if we get 10 under, that's kind of amazing considering eight under was the first round lead. Um, so I, I don't think this is our father's U.S. Open anymore. It doesn't have to be. 
but we can go to really cool golf courses and um, have a great test. And even if it's 1200 wins, um, I've had to kind of change my mindset on that a little bit because I used to be like a five over, man. I want to see these guys get brutalized out there. And I want to see, I want to see a lot of bogeys and um, all this, but I, I've kind of changed my mindset because, and, and unfortunately, you know, the next few years of U.S. Opens are the typical Wingfoot, Pinehurst, um, Shinnecock, uh, Oakmont, and a lot of those are great courses, and I'm not, you know, disputing that, but I, I think variety uh, in the test of the U.S. Open isn't necessarily a bad thing, so um, we got a special guest, I see. So, yeah, I don't know. Four. Yeah, yeah, maybe she has some thoughts on LACC. Uh, Zach, what's, you know, any, any thoughts on the golf course? Did you like it? Did you think it showed out well on TV? I, I thought it was okay. I think it's just when they're getting to the point where they're, they're, they're growing the rough out so thick, these players nowadays are so strong. Um, I mean, they, that's what they, they work out for. Everybody talks about uh, working out so they can hit the ball far, right. Hit, hit big drives, long distance. But I think really um, these guys are so strong and they're so good. It doesn't really matter how thick you grow the rough. They can go down and get the ball. I mean, they're, they know how to place through some of these things now. Again, I'm not the, uh, the golfer that the two of you guys are and played in college, but, um, I, I think sometimes they can just go down, dig it out and throw it up onto the green and run it up onto the green. So, uh, I, I do think they're going to have to find some way. I don't know if rolling the ball back is what, what I would call the right thing to do, but, um, I don't, I'd like to a, see a little bit more. I, th I think it's a lesser of all the evils though at this point and, yeah. and and actually rory talked a little bit yesterday after travelers like and he i think he had a good point i mean of course all the all the rory haters which sack i don't i don't know if i put you in that group or not but um uh, but rory made the point that uh you know tpc river highlands i mean that that was that was those guys are, I mean, if, if there's any evidence the ball needs rolled back, it was Rory on 18 yesterday when he, Jesus, 420 yard hole, he had what, 42 yards in. Yeah. Now, the, the haters will say, well, he still made par. <laughs> um, and that's fair. And and he didn't win the tournament. But, um, you know, some of these golf courses are so obsolete now, you know, like TP River Highlands, where they don't have the land to, to move back the tees. And there's not a lot they can do except grow the rough to impossible heights and, um, you know, defend the course that way. But like you said, Zach, these guys are so good from even from the rough now that um, they can still make a bunch of birdies. Um, you know, I, I, I think the defense of, of LACC was utilizing certain pins and um, kind of the uniqueness of the slopes of not only the greens, but the fairways and, and um, making it run firm and fast. And I just think they missed it on Thursday. But um, I digress. Um, Johnny, I want to dive in real quick. One minute on Rory in majors and, and then we can move on uh, past that. But. I, I think he's been fighting so long to try to get this right. Do Am I too aggressive on, um, you know, basically throughout the whole four rounds, four rounds of a major tournament? Am, am I too conservative? What's my prep? Should I play the week before? Should I not play the week before? Um, in pressers, I'm going to, I'm going to go all in or like this, this last one, he doesn't talk to the, you know, the press at all, which I actually think was a good thing. I can focus on the golf. I think he's tried everything imaginable. Um, sometimes I think it's just the, his strategy and um, the lack of execution is really what it comes down to. I mean, this felt in some ways a lot like St. Andrews last year, except I think this was a little worse because I think he just got flat out beat last year by, by Cam at St. Andrews when he just went nuts on the back nine. I mean, this one was absolutely there for the taking. And I always felt like he was on the edge of just of taking hold of this thing. Like you said, he just drove it on a string the whole week, especially on Sunday. But, uh, you know, 14 to me was a real sticking point because I did, I felt like he, he, you know, he drives the ball in the rough, um, the par five, and he decides to lay up. And then when, after the layup, that's when he stuffs it in that bunker. When I thought, you know, something like that, he can hit a five wood up there near the green, get it in that same bunker in two and, and make birdie from there. Um, so, you know, sometimes I wonder if his strategy is, you know, not, not picking his spots at, at the right time, you know, when he's maybe being over conservative again, I always go to your Rory fucking McElroy, um, you know, be who you are and, and do this. And sometimes he backs off too much and then he has to try to make 20, 25 footers like he did a lot of the, 
round on Sunday at L- LACC and it just couldn't couldn't make the putts. Well, just yeah, a, a quick a quick summary of what I think he needs to do is yeah, he does need to pick needs to pick a, a strategy and stick with it to, for his, for his you know preparing the week before the week of and and sticking to it. But also when he gets on the golf course. I, I'm not saying he's happy go lucky, but he's not he, he doesn't have that that mean streak like uh like a, a Brooks or or a Tiger and where he could get angry with himself and then play better because of it. And it just maybe he does, maybe that is the case. I, you know, we don't we're not in his brain and he's gonna react differently, but him trying to 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 defend the PGA tour, to try to be the nice guy and explain and be articulate and everything like that in these interviews and spend, you know, 25 minutes in the press room, you know, answering all the questions that he does. So, so eloquently, you know, he's got to just be able to tune that stuff out and focus on the golf, but also pick a way to play the game, play the golf course. And, and I, I think a lot of it is, is he's not hard enough on himself. Maybe that, maybe that's what, May, you know, maybe he's done that before and, it, and he doesn't feel like he's comfortable with that. But uh, he's really fucking McElroy, like you said. You know, if you hit a bad shot, you know, where you miss a green, I mean, you got to you gotta whack yourself in the ankle or something like that. Hit yourself with your glove or something. And, you know, you don't have to throw a big old fit like, you know, like, a, you know, like we all do uh, us amateurs and everything like that. But uh, but something there to just kind of to to reignite and refocus yourself and understand that he's got more talent in his fingernail than Wyndham Clark will ever have in any day he ever exists since he, you know, from here on out. I mean, and that's not saying that Wyndham Clark, I mean, Wyndham Clark won the U S fucking open. So, you know, Rory's got to understand that he is that good. And, 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 you know, these, these second and third place finishes and everything where he just kind of fizzles off. That's, that's not acceptable for him. He's, he, he, you know, he's that damn good. And, and, you know, he, he's got to figure out something. And, and I, I, I just, I see a little too much happy go lucky and I don't mind him even afterwards. If he's like, you know what, I, I keep giving myself chances. I'll keep being there. But during the round though, something's not working and it's continually not working. And it seems to happen a lot, whether it's the first round at Port Rush when he, um, you know, when he, we, made triple on the first hole, whether it's the final round, whether it's back in Augusta when he had the chance at the grand slam and hit it in the cabins, you know, dead left on 10, you know, there's just, there's gotta be something there. That's uh, it seems like it's a pattern and, and maybe that's it where he's got to light a fire under his ass. And maybe it's his caddy saying, you know, dude, you're Roy McElroy, cut the shit out. I, I think he needs a caddy change. I think he needs, I think he needs, I think he needs a real caddy. I think he might need Zach's dad. Is what I, I yes, but he no, doesn't but, need a yes man. But he, to be but, fair, but honestly, like um, I, I forget what his caddy's name. I know it's his buddy, but um, Harry Diamond. Harry, thank you, thank you. Um, Johnny's got an encyclopedia of every, every caddy. Dude, name he's so good. Or, yeah, um, yeah. Harry doesn't. He doesn't even help him read putts. He doesn't no. even help him read putts. It's amazing. He's a buddy. Um, you know, I just I have a real problem. I, I really think a caddy change might might do him some good, especially with I know I know that's why he got rid of his old guy because he wanted to take more responsibility for his own golf game. Great. Well, I think now you need to get someone back in there and balance it out and really help you read the greens. I mean, just imagine someone like Bones helping him read putts who's mm-hmm. grinding over putts with JT. So I I I, I would love to see him uh, get rid of Harry and go on to someone else that's actually a professional caddy. Uh, Zach, anything to finalize there with Rory before we move on? Run along no, already. No, I'm. You know, I, uh, I, I, I like Rory. I would like to see him win. Now that the live golf stuff's going, I actually felt bad for the guy. He got strung out and left out to dry. You would hope he could get a win in there, but you know, I just think he kind of in a weird way, like a LeBron James. You know, uh, how many times have you seen LeBron James settle for a 40 footer when he needs to get to the bucket? You know, you look at like a Michael Jordan, he's going to the bucket and dunking on your face Uh, and not at the beginning of the game, but at the end of the game, right? Like that's what he's known for is finishing the games. And um, I just don't, it's, I don't know if he has that dog in him. You know, I think he's just like you said, Johnny, a happy go lucky guy. And 
you know, I'll get it next time. And I mean, Michael Jordan ain't, ain't trying to get it next time. Yep. That's actually a good comparison with when LeBron just takes the last shot and he's, he's settling for three and everyone's like, dude, you can get to the basket at will do it. And with Rory McIlroy, I mean, I argue, I think he's the greatest driver of the golf ball ever. Ever. Oh, ever. ever. I mean, Tiger I mean, was not soul. this Tiger. Tiger was not this good of a driver. He just, I mean, regularly Rory is 365 down the middle of the fairway and you're like, it's, it's just on repeat. I mean, this dude should be winning these things going away. And even, even like a TPC river Highlands, like the drives he was hitting were, were unbelievable. And he'd stuff it to six feet, miss a putt or hit a, hit a wedge from 80 yards. That's 25 feet. And you're like, it's just not all connecting. I mean, God, I'm waiting for the time it does because he could win seven, eight times in a season, but it just hasn't done it yet. Um, we got to keep moving forward. Um, I don't really have much to say about Keegan um, winning yesterday. Um, good for him. Um, a lot of that narrative on the Northeast, uh, you know, kind of that's his boy. It kind of did feel like, well, LA in a, in a jokingly way, like joking way, you know, LA being LeBron's town, Keegan now owns all of Northeast. Um, so that, that was a little overblown, but I am impressed by Keegan. I mean, it's two wins on the season. Um, he's probably going to be on the Ryder cup team at some point. We got to do like a Ryder cup episode because there's like 15, 16 guys on the U S team that I think, uh, are on the U S side that could be on the team, but, um, Incredibly impressive by Keegan to we always knew he was a flusher ball striker. The putting's been an issue for a long time, but he's kind of corrected it this year, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, he's going to make the Ryder Cup team on points. I think. I just, I mean, there's not much time left, and I, he still got some good golf. And he, yeah, he hits his irons so unbelievably well, uh, and is hitting them well this whole season. the The putter has always been the issue, and then when they when they stopped with the belly putter, he, you know, kind of lost his way and everything, but, uh, but, but he's, he's back and made a lot of putts and played tough. And he, he just did, didn't look for one moment and I didn't catch the whole thing, but he didn't look for one moment when I saw it, that any of these guys were going to catch him had, had a, a single chance there. So, you know, it, it it's cool because it's neat when these guys, a good player like Keegan, who's won five times before this. I mean, he won a PGA Championship, so he's won some big events. But when a, when a win like that, you know, means a little bit extra. Obviously, being a, a you know, quote unquote, local guy, it, it's neat to see. Um, not much else to say about the golf tournament. I mean, it had a good feel. That always does. The crowds are great, and it was yet again another elevated event, which seems like it's, if you're not playing a major, it's an elevated event. That's what it seems like it's been, you know, just about every single week here. So that's about all, you know, I liked it, but it was just like, you know, this elevated event thing, I think they've got to, and I don't know, they're probably going to significantly change it now that there's been that announcement with, uh, with, with the PIF and everything like that. But I don't know what you guys think about it. Um, you know, it was kind of cool with the elevated events to start because it got good fields and everything, but it feels like it's before and after majors. And, you know, as, as I know, Phil, you and I, as, as huge golf fans who watch a whole bunch of it, we kind of get, you know, after we, after the U.S. Open, you kind of want a softer event just kind of mm. to emotionally recover from watching eight to 10 hours to 12 hours of golf per day. It's just like, you know what? I don't need to see Rom and Cantley and Scheffler and, and all these other great players. Let's build it up to something different. But it's like tournament's over on Sunday and boom, here we are. We've got another big time event. Zach, you got money, anything money, to add money. on the elevated event model? Because I got a couple items, but you go first. No, I mean, I, I think that you're just, again, there's, there, there could be a little bit of, uh, uh, yeah, we you just got a lot of golf events throughout the year you know what i mean um so like you said johnny last week we spent so much time watching the event and then it's like i i didn't have the attention span to watch this last weekend i watched as much as i could but i spent a lot of my time that i would get for this on the u.s open watching that and spending my time you know that yeah. uh 
I really wasn't that engaged in this last one. And then you look up and you're like, oh man, there's the the two leaders got a five stroke lead on the field. So I, I watched for a few minutes and then off to kids I went. So, um, yeah. And, and, and I think maybe if those two leaders are Colin Morikawa and Justin Thomas, then maybe you feel you, you, you might change your plan Sunday, but when it's Keegan Bradley and Chaz Reeve, you're like, eh, you know, I'm good. I, I, I think if there was ever an argument for an off week uh, on the, on the tour, it would have been this week, you know, post us open, got to go back across the country. Um, it just felt like a time for a breather and you're like, Oh shit, it's an elevated event. Like all the best players are playing again. Like, I guess that's cool, but like, man, it kind of feels like I need a break. And um, you know, then, it, you know, this, this is the softest spot on the schedule of, of any point. Sorry, Johnny rocket mortgage and John Deere back to back. It just, it, it just kind of a nice time for a break and, and kind of a reboot before the final major. And then the run into the FedEx cup playoffs um, I think the elevated event model is good on paper. I think it, obviously the, the tour did it because they felt like they had to um, at the end of last year. It felt it was fun early in the season. Like remember Riviera when it was Rom and Homa and the final group, and that was a great event. And um, even Bay Hill was kind of cool with Kitayama and Scotty winning players. So all those before the Masters felt kind of like a big deal. And then since the majors happened, it's felt less of less important um well i think wells fargo when when Wyndham clark won you were kind of like huh i guess that was an elevated event i guess i didn't even know johnny asked me this week he's like is is this the last elevated event i said i don't know i said i think there's one more i think the scottish open's an elevated event but i'm not damn sure because the pj tour also hasn't done a great job of actually promoting that it is an elevated event yeah. and how do you differentiate that from the john deere classic it all looks the same and feels the same there's better players but and they play for a hell of a lot more money. Um, but other than that, they haven't done a great job of like really truly promoting it and making it theirs. I don't think they're going to be around, um, you know, because they couldn't, they couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford it. And I don't know how it all looks anyways, going forward. I, I, I didn't even put that on the agenda tonight guys, because there's nothing to talk about. We have no idea what anything looks like in the world of golf from three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when the first the announcement was made. Um, the only thing else I want to say about this tournament before we talk a few minutes about Rocket Mortgage is that Scotty Scheffler is statistically playing the best golf outside of Tiger Woods since 2004, according to Data Golf. He is, um, I mean, I know he hasn't, he's only won twice this year, but I mean, we're talking about historical tee to green numbers uh, since Bay Hill, but there's been four or five, six, ten tournaments since um Oh, well, starting with Bay Hill, and he hasn't finished worse than fifth tee to green um, in any of those. And his baseline is so, so high, or his floor is so, so high that even when he doesn't, you know, putt well, which he hasn't most of the season, he's still finishing um, in the top 12. I think he's finished in the top 12, 16 straight events um, since the fall. It's historical stuff. He's so much better of a player than I ever thought he would be coming out of Texas. Um, I just don't know what else to say about him except that he's just insanely good at golf. Johnny? He is. And, you know, I, I think we've kind of, at least me, had kind of gone numb to how well he struck the ball. I mean, yeah, he's hit it. He's driving the ball well, almost as well as Rory. And he's hitting his irons better than Rom. And, you know, you just think, okay, yeah, he's he's just a great player and everything. But then when you see the actual numbers and, and how many strokes that he's gaining uh, with his ball striking week after week after week, and it's not just a one-off thing where he's having one good week here, then he might have an off one. I mean, he's just, you know, when he doesn't, when he finishes 12th, he puts it horribly and still finishes like that. So I think this week he finished top five and the putting was just, just kind of below average, you know, just, just it's, it's unbelievable how it's, it's every week and it's, it's, it's fun to watch. You know, he's got that goofy swing with, you know, where he kind of routes it and then the feet are just nuts, but he flushes it every single time. And it's, it just, he hits the green and he's, He's got a 20 foot or less birdie putt. It seems like every single hole. And it's just, it's amazing to watch. And I encourage 
anybody watching this or listening to this that watch Scotty when you get the chance right now because a guy hitting it this good, you know, especially if it's you know if you like if that's something that you can respect and appreciate, we we don't see this often at all. Even when the best players, you know, when when uh, when DJ was at his best, when Justin Thomas was at his best, when Rory's at his best, they're not this good this consistently. So this is just this is amazing stuff, and I I'm I'm trying to soak it in, and it's kind of hard to believe because he doesn't have the wins to to show for it. But uh, you know, it's one of those things that you know we always talk about from a betting aspect. He, he's a guy you just got to keep kind of hoping, and and uh, you know, once he has that week, he's going to win by ten. Right. He's he hasn't had the week where he's just dominant with the putter as well. When it happens, he's going to win by a million. Um. I mean, this stat got me with with how well it's been, um, or well how well he's been playing um, st- this whole year. Fourteen tournaments, he's lost to sixty three players in fourteen tournaments. Um, Jesus, I mean, that's just insane consistency. And then uh, I saw this on Twitter in in two thousand over twenty two events, Tiger lost to sixty eight players that entire year in twenty two tournaments. So um, it is that is there is some symmetry, some Tiger like symmetry with how well he's at least hitting the golf ball. Um, last item, guys, Rocket Mortgage this week. It's Johnny's hometown event. Um, Johnny, I'm just gonna give it to you. Take it away. Here setting it up for us. Wow. Rocket Mortgage Classic. Can't remember. <laughs> was this like the fifth year of it or something like that? Something like that. Um, so it's hosted at the Detroit Golf Club, mostly on the the north course, which is the Donald Ross Golf Course. Uh, so built, I think it was 1908 is when the club was opened. Um, my college golf team, we had practice privileges there uh, and still do actually. Um, they've got a par 72 course, which is the North course, the championship one and the South course, which is probably a slightly better golf course is the one we always played was a par 68. It was regulation size, but it only had like one or two par fives and it had a whole bunch of great par threes. So, um, so anybody who's got to play the South course at, at Detroit golf club, um, that was a blessing played that golf course. I don't know, two, 300 times only played the North course, maybe 30 times or something like that. But it, it's, it's just your classic golf course with the big trees. It's fairly tight. Um, it's got the, uh, the, the Moundy greens, uh, the classic Donald Ross, uh, like bowl shaped where the ball can kind of roll off the edges of the greens. Um, it's not overly long for tour standards. I don't think, I don't know what the card has it at but uh it it never seemed to bother the guys as far as length there but really what it is is guys are going to go low on it the greens putt really really well they are kind of lumpy they're not like oakland hills lumpy but they're there's there's some movement to them but they roll real good and you just got to be able to hit a lot of greens and and make a whole bunch of birdies because i think 23 under one the travelers it's going to be very very similar 23 to 25 under, I would imagine at, uh, at, uh, the Detroit golf club. So, um, I recommend, uh, just finding guys who make a lots of birdies. Um, you want guys who hit the ball well to hit or good drivers, of the golf ball, I should say, uh, um, that can get it out there. And even if you miss the fairways, you could still get some, some shots at the green there. So, um, you know, it is a soft part of the schedule. They got some, it got some okay guys in the field this year, which is, mm-hmm. which is good to see, but we're going to see, I mean, we're going to see a lot of birdies and we're going to see a lot of low scores and you got, you don't want guys who, who struggle, you know, struggle with putting and, and aren't good, you know, iron players and missed greens like that. Uh, I, I mean, feels like largely it's rewarded bombers since it's uh, the four years that they play here. Nate Lashley won that first year when I think he was an alternate and shot like 26 under, uh, but Bryson won here in 21 or I'm sorry, 20, right? Yeah. 2020 Cam Davis, 2021, hundred to one ticket that year for me. Cam Davis. Yes, you got that. Um, and uh, Finau last year. So it's kind of the trend bombers, birdies, um, but then, you know, like Troy Merritt almost won here that year. Cam Davis was in the playoff with him. He's not a bomber. Um, I know Webb has played well here. Obviously not a bomber. Webb. Yeah. Really well, normally what, what 
they stop water in the greens come the weekend. Cause I know I remember last couple of years with Bryson and, and with, uh, with, with, when the Fina win, the greens got real baked out. And so you had to hit the fairways. So, you know, you look at guys like that, like Merritt and, and, and Webb that do hit a lot of fairways there. So I think that's a big value as well. Zach, I know you're not as big a betting guy as Johnny and I, but is, um, you know, Tony Fina is the favorite at 12 to one. Then it's Ricky Fowler at 14 to one. Um, is this the week Ricky Fowler gets it done, ends the five year winless streak, capitalizes on some amazing play this year? Do you like him this week? I do. I mean, I, I am, uh, I'm in love with his new swing. I mean, it, it, it looks so good. It fits him. Uh, and uh, he, he made a U.S. Open. He definitely had some birdies. I mean, the yeah. most in the U.S. Open, I'm thinking that. So, um, and like, yeah. and and Tony's not a bad bad pick either. But um, I'm I'm liking Ricky Ricky this week. I think he can. I think he can pull it off. So that's where my that's where my money's going. And he followed it up this last weekend with a 60 on Saturday at Travelers. I mean, top. I don't think he finished just outside the top 10. It wasn't a great Sunday, but he's obviously playing great golf. I still think he's going to be on the Ryder Cup team. I maintain that. Uh, um, I think he's going to keep this thing going. Um, I don't. I don't know if he wins this week, but I think he. I think he, there's no reason he can't make a bunch of birdies here and continue playing well. Um, Johnny under thirty to one. Who's Who's the guy for you that you like there? Under thirty, I, I don't mind Rick. First of all, um, you know it's Rocket Mortgage is the sponsor. He's got that on his sleeve, so it's kind of a big week for him, anyways. He's never finished in the top ten here, but he's played here, I think, every single year. And I, I said at the beginning of the season that he was going to win at some point this season. So I'm going to bet him, not because I absolutely love him this week, but because I want to be there and, and have a ticket on him when he does win. Um, but the guy I like the most out of this group is is Hideki. Um, there's some there's good golf, and it seems like some 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 healthy golf as well, which is uh, what's kind of been an issue with him since he's won the Masters. Is uh, whether he's healthy or not with uh, with the back issues and everything. But he's been playing really really solid. And um, of all those guys, I think he kind of he doesn't. I think he has the best value because I I just like his his chances um he's played here a couple times here in uh, in rocket mortgage i think he's finished in the top like 20 or 25 both of the times um but he's definitely trending in, in a direction i like and i've already put a bet on him um he's the one guy i like under me I, I could definitely make an argument Hideki. He, he has shown some flashes here the last few weeks um uh, there's really no reason why he couldn't play well here and win. Um, some of my problem in betting and I guess just in life, but in betting is I'm stubborn to the point where I'll just keep doing the same thing because I'm convinced it's going to happen. And um, I was so convinced Colin Morikawa was going to win this last weekend because I'm like, man, you couldn't set, you couldn't make a golf course more perfect for Colin Morikawa than TPC River Highlands. And then he goes out and he was four over the first day when everyone was setting it on fire. And I was like, what are we doing? Comes back with a, I think a 63, still misses the cut. I'm calling back to Colin Morikawa again at 18 to one because this doesn't make as much sense as last week, but I'm convinced he's still hitting it great. He played well at the U.S. Open. Um, I'm just going to throw away first round from Travelers. I love Mark Howe, 18 to 1. You can get the uh, DraftKings boost of plus 300 on him to get him over 20 to 1. That's my top play yet again. Like I said, I'm convinced Mark Howe is going to win. He hasn't won a PGA Tour event since the 2021 Open Championship. I can't believe that. That is hard and to believe. It really is. Um so that's my guy. I also like Sanjay as well at twenty to one. I think it's yeah. a little low on Sanjay, but he hasn't he hasn't been his typical self a lot this this summer for the most part. So I understand the number. Um, kind of atypical. Since for Max Homa. No, you like Max, Max Homa? You like I'm, Max I'm asking. I'm asking um, you guys. Yeah, no, uh, he, he's been he's been we, playing some. Yeah, he's been playing some bad golf, um, unfortunately, yeah. and just just some sloppiness right now. And I think he's more of a early season West Coast guy. Um, lo- love Max Homa as as a golfer, but not not Max Homa 
as betting on him as a golfer here recently. You know, once he once he missed the cut at LACC, I mean that was kind of his thing. And once he missed that, I you could tell something just wasn't wasn't clicking. And 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 he'll be back. He'll um, hopefully he'll make the Ryder Cup team. Um, and hopefully he'll he'll play some good golf this summer. But I don't really like him. And especially at that number under 20 to one, I don't think there's any value there. I, I think he's kind of fallen into that. These golfers make a lot of money and he's got a lot of other things going on and on his plate. It's really hard sometimes to to dial it in all the time and be dialed and focused. Like, so I would agree with that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard to maintain a golf swing for 12 straight months and he played great golf in the winter. So, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, life gets in the way, you know, maybe he's practicing a little bit less with the kid, maybe, you know, maybe just something's off and he just can't find it yet. And he'll find it. He's that good. I mean, his track record's proven. He'll find it. It's just not right now, unfortunately. And I think statistically looking at his stats on data golf, the putter has fallen off quite a bit. Um, you know, early in the season, he was gaining two, three strokes a tournament when he was out there on the West Coast, Genesis, uh, when he went at Farmers. And now he's, you know, he's either just just barely above average, below average this last week. So I think the putter's fallen off a little bit, which obviously tends to happen with these guys around the green as well. Is kind of struggling. So short game seems to be the thing that's killing him the most right now. I agree with Johnny. I mean, he could he could easily win, but I won't be part of it this week. I think it's a little low. I'd much prefer more at 18 even jt at 18 but i'm not going to say it out loud um don't say it um say it. so for time purposes um johnny over 30 to 1 anyone over 30 to 1 the field gets very thin but there's also some really fun names in here um um my guy ludwig is playing again so i'm always yeah. interested in him but uh anyone you've you've pegged down the board here post 31 uh, i'll probably bet ludwig aberg as a win, but I'm also going to get him in the, in a top 20 market, at least maybe even a top 10, he is playing some good golf. And this, this tournament, you know, had a couple first time winners in, in Davis and, um, and Lashley that have won it. So yeah, the fields were, were a little bit weaker and everything, but yeah, he's a guy I like, I know you, you like him. You kind of turned me on to him when, when you got him at a good number was Austin Ekro. Um, He's played really good golf. I was looking at his finishes after you had texted me earlier today, and I was like, "Dude, this guy is on been yeah. a, on a summertime heater here." And uh, forty five is is all right, you know. You you kind of hope he was a little bit towards like sixty to one, but that's that's fine there. Um, let me see here. Adam Hadwin, I think he's recovered from getting uh, getting sacked in Canada there, um, but. Uh, <laughs> He fits the golf course real well. Good, really good iron player. And if you can get that putter going, and I mean, you know, truthfully, just an FYI, from the Detroit Golf Club, you drive south to get to Canada. So he is actually going north to try to win this event. So just just a little fun fact there for for uh, telling you how far north Michigan is. It's and a very, it's a very fun fact. You're yep, no problem here. And um, I kind of want to get a little bit on Sam Bennett there. He Played pretty good at the yeah. U.S. Open, and that number when I saw it at 110 to one, I was like, "Okay, this guy I think has that thing that we want Rory to have." Now he's not nearly in the same uh, level as as talent wise, but he's really really good, and I think Sam Bennett could be kind of that guy, and I think that's really good value as a bomb there, and you could look at him in a 20, 30, or top 40 as well. You may be right on the talent and the value. Sam Bennett is, he is unwatchable. He is unwatchable. He waggles like uh, not anyone I've seen since uh, 2002 Sergio. Um, I, when I was at the Memorial, I watched him tee off one and it was, it was painful. It was really painful. Even my kid looked at me. He's like, is he going to hit the ball? As he was, I was like, I, I think so. I mean, it was, it was bad. It was unwatchable. Um, plus he's got that goofy ass goatee as well that I'm not a fan of. Um, yeah. Uh, Austin Eckro is playing amazing. You're right. Um, I've, it was so weird this morning. I looked at the books and he was 80 to one and I'm like, wait, last week he was like 50 to 60 in a much better field. Um, so I grabbed that. It's already been down, bet down to 45. 
Um, I still like him at that number, though. Um, I love Justin Suh at 75 to 1, a guy that's been playing great this year. And, uh, you know, good birdie average, can can make a lot of birdies as well. Um, got a lot of good finishes, top 20s this year. I like him in a weaker field like this. Um, so that's my guy down the board at 75 that I like. Zach, anyone else you're targeting? Or you're just like, when are we, are we almost done? No way. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, Adam Hadwin uh, kind of speaks to me a little bit, but like you said, uh, I know this is bet best, best bet podcast, but um, I throw my money away at these things all the time and never seem to win. So maybe I do need to take better, better uh, advice from you guys. So um, yeah, Adam Hadwin kind of speaks to me a little bit, but that's about all I see that I'd be going up for. I don't know if you should listen to us because I was rooting for Ches Reby yesterday because I had a bet on him and maybe that's, that was good, but it ended up not being great at all because I had to actually pull for Ches Reby uh, in, a, in a golf tournament and that's never a great spot to be in. Uh, tough, yeah, tough. Um, anything else, Johnny, Zach from the Rocket Mortgage? No, I'm go good. Ricky. Let's go, Ricky. Let's go, Rick. Time to get it done. I, You know what, though? I'm so happy he's playing this tournament because dude has played pretty much in all the best fields this year. I mean, majors, elevated events, the the best, you know, non-elevated events. And, and so I like, I like him against a field that's a little bit weaker where, okay, you know, I got to beat some of the top guys, but I don't have to beat Scotty Scheffler and Rory and John Rahm, you know, like I can be, I can be the struggling JT. Sure. I can be the, the kind of middling Tony fee. Now he hasn't done a lot the last few weeks. So I, I like the spot for Ricky. Um, I think we'll all be pulling for him. Um, definitely. You know, if, like I said, five years, gotta get this done. Yeah. Well, and I think that like, if you watch the U S open, I, I thought that he just missed a few things that it was just that, you know, you got to have the confidence in that time frame to finish and, I just don't think he was used to being there late in the weekend. You know, he hasn't been there forever. And um, I, I'm hoping that, you know, just that one, one week, like you said, it's a little softer field, um, make a couple putts, He's, you know, it's a rocket mortgage. That's his, his main sponsor. So let's go. Okay. All right, boys. We unpacked a lot. I think we just got it done in over an hour and I feel pretty good about that. So Johnny, Zach, thanks guys for for being on, and uh, let's have a good week here at the Rocket Mortgage. Let's do it. All right, let's go play. Yeah, let's go play too. We can do that sometime soon as well. Uh, right. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for best bets are back this week. We took a week off last week. We needed a breather. Uh, back this week uh, on Wednesday. Check us out on YouTube as well. Um, the next month will be really really fun uh, for the show. We'll start kind of gearing up toward the city in early August. And then uh, I got some NFL stuff coming as well. So it should be fun. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time.